Yeah, that Chris Evans dude. He is a natural born leader wherever he goes. Snowpiercer, released in 2013 and is directed by Bong Chun-ho, who is a South Korean director and please forgive me if I did not pronounce that correctly. He has also directed films such as Oakjaw. If you haven't seen it. The film stars Chris Evans, Song Kang Ho, Jamie Bell, Octavia Spencer, Ewan Brenner, Tilda Swinton, Ed Harris, and John Hurt. 17 years ago, the ozone layer depleted and the Earth is completely frozen. The only surviving organisms on the planet are on board a super train that is in constant motion around the world. But even though these people were lucky enough to be passengers on this train, there is still an elitist class structure in place here. Chris Evans plays the leader of the hundreds of passengers living in the back of the train, basically the steerage. And they are sick and tired of being treated as expendable bodies in the world of this train. They're dirty, their clothes are ragged, and they are only fed these disgusting protein bars every once in a while. So Evans stages a revolt against the powers on the train, and their journey takes them farther and farther through the cars of the train until hopefully they get to the engine and take control of their world that unfortunately is now this train. First things first, this is a really cool idea. The film is based off of a French graphic novel, which I have not read, so I couldn't tell you how faithful this adaptation is of the original source material. But I love the very clear social commentary on class status. This huge train is now these characters' world, and the outside world that used to be the Earth is basically now outer space. If you go outside, you will freeze to death. And the lower class is in the back of the train, basically getting all the table scraps, while the elitists are in the front cars of the train, enjoying all the splendors of the train itself. Clubs, food, alcohol, pools, manicures, pedicures, education. Sometimes it does get a little too in your face, but I think that's the whole point of the movie. You know, it's very hard to realize that discrimination does occur in the world based on race, gender, religion, economic class status, because the world is so big. But when the world is condensed down to a 20 car train, it becomes very obvious. But there is something to say about order, and without order, there would just be chaos, and how can an ecosystem survive when it's just in chaos. Tilda Swinton's character in this movie uses a great analogy of the order in the culture of the people on a plane. You have people that purchase first class tickets, business class tickets, uh, economy plus, and coach tickets. There is an order and there are certain rules that are established when you buy your particular ticket. But if the people in coach all of a sudden decided, hey, I want the first class seats, that would disrupt the established order and then everything on the plane would be chaos. This would of course lead to people getting hurt, or eventually killed, or worst off yet, the entire plane would crash, completely destroying this ecosystem. And you know, she's not wrong. Having an established order is very important to the survival of organisms. But that is something that is very easy to say from someone who is more privileged than someone who is not. This movie raises some very interesting social questions, and it presents it in a very entertaining way. Chris Evans, again in this movie, proves that he is a good actor. Yes, we all know him as Captain America or that guy from Not Another Teen Movie, but he has done some very great smaller stuff too. This movie, Sunshine and Puncture, come to mind. And yes, he absolutely pulls off being a leader and is able to do very convincing fight choreography. But there is a moment in this film where he explores his character's deepest, darkest time, and you can see just the, the pain and the vulnerability and the truth that Evans brings to it. He basically starts weeping like a child because he's revisiting the terrible person that this character used to be. And he does it exceptionally well. Plus, Chris Evans always has kind of that boyish charm about it. Almost every character that he plays, you can see just that little kid playing around. And Tilda Swinton looks like she's having an absolute blast in this film. She's almost unrecognizable here. She has the flapper haircut, she has the granny glasses, and she has the overcompensating dentures. It's, it's hilarious. Plus, she's my favorite actress working today, so I'm always happy to see her pop up and stuff. Jamie Bell plays the young hothead who's always ready to revolt in this movie. And Ewan Bremer shows up as the weird, quirky, 
probably drunk character, so basically everything he's ever done. There is also some lovely cinematography in this film, particularly with the fight scenes. A lot of it is done in slow motion, but the cool thing about it is that the sound almost completely drops out, and you just hear the swooshes of the knives and of the axes. And instead of the big, melodramatic score that we've been hearing throughout this film, the whole score gets stripped away and all we hear is just these two piano notes being struck. And I love when fight scenes get quiet like that. It makes the scenes more beautiful as opposed to being, you know, audio and visual vomit of explosions and noises. There are two things that this film suffers from though. One, the visual effects are awful. This came out in 2013 and, you know, in 2013 visual effects look pretty realistic. Uh -uh. Not in this movie. Do you remember those Beast Wars cartoons from the 90s? It was very innovative for its time. I think it was actually the very first 3D animated cartoon for television. It was very young in that technology's development. So you got a lot of squared off block set pieces. Basically, it looked like every early N64 game. That's basically the same thing that happened in this film, particularly when you got the exterior shots of the outside world. And number two, there's kind of a total recall-ish storyline that's just kind of thrown in here, and it comes out of nowhere. If you haven't seen the end of Total Recall, it's basically them recreating an atmosphere on Mars. It's the same idea here, but it's just shoehorned into the main plot and there was no build-up to it at all. And if that's what this movie was leading up to, I would have loved a lot more from that aspect. Other than that though, I'd have to say Snowpiercer is a good movie with great social commentary and beautiful cinematography. It starts off with a lot of shaky cam, but as you move through the train, it evens itself out. The acting is great, and I would absolutely recommend it to any of you that haven't seen this film. So I'm gonna give Snowpiercer four out of five Blu-rays. It's good. It's good. Good. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part in my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm watching next. Let's take a look. God damn it! Yet. Ah. Ah, I don't even want to say it. Halle Berry's Catwoman. Ah! Uh, why do I own this? Why do I own this? Because I'm an idiot and I want to own every single superhero movie. God. Uh. I remember the first time I tried to watch this. I moved in with my wife and she had a burnt DVD disc of this movie. And I laughed and teased her about it. Why the fuck would you have this film? What, what's going on? But then I got curious one day. I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna judge it until I see it. I popped it in. I couldn't even get a quarter of the way through it. And then many years later, I picked it up for very cheap and I watched the entire thing. Ugh. Oh, and I wanted to kill myself that day. I might have to get myself drunk for this. That might be the only way I'd enjoy myself. So everyone, have you seen Snowpiercer? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, please comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And when you're done commenting, please like and subscribe to my channel so you know the next time I'm posting my next movie review. So everyone, I will see you next time with my review of Catwoman. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.